there's a lot of things that we can do with CSS that are actually a really bad idea and can ruin user experiences without us even really realizing we're making these mistakes. So in this video, we're going to look at three really small changes that you can make that just make for a better user experience going as far as helping users not even want to vomit. And I'm not even exaggerating as much as you might think with that. But before we get to that one, I want to look at one of the most common faux pas that is out there which let's jump right into the code and take a look where you've come up and you've created some buttons like this and you're really annoyed because you can't really see this shadow I've put on there. There, there you can see it there it's more of a glow than a shadow but it's being covered up because there's an outline on that and so what people do is they, they get annoyed and they do the the outline zero or an outline none and they get rid of the outline of on things and first of all this is annoying because I've seen a lot of buttons that don't do focus states either. Uh, this case I did, so if I'm keyboard navigating, I can actually see where I am, or if I go in the link, the link is changing colors. So do make sure you have a focus state. And that's because the amount of sites I've seen, I literally, I keyboard navigate sometimes, and I go, I'm hitting tab, and I just don't know where I am. And I'm not even someone who regularly keyboard navigates. I can only imagine the hellscape that the internet is for people who do. But the, the biggest part of this faux pas isn't necessarily the outline of zero because there are ways of fixing that where we have actual focus states and that's fine I think a lot of you guys already know we should have a focus possibility in there so if someone is keyboard navigating it's still obvious what's being selected as they're tabbing through or finding other ways to navigate through your site and so maybe you do actually want to remove the outline to a certain extent even though I think doing it on the star selector like this is the wrong choice but what I would suggest you do actually is, let's say on these links, first of all, I don't think it's a bad thing. It's more obvious what's coming in. But here we do wanna sort of do something about it because it does not look good. On those, I just gave those a class of button. So I'm gonna select them. And instead of doing an outline of zero, I'm gonna do an outline color of transparent. Now, when I go through here, you'll notice it looks exactly the same as before. Uh, as I'm tabbing through, I can see that really terrible glow that I have on these, but there are times when the user takes control and that glow will actually go away. And that is if they go into their accessibility on Windows 11, it's contrast themes, 10 had a different name. There's different ways of doing this, but I can turn on a high contrast mode. When we do this, a lot of the default things get changed. As you can clearly see, everything looks very different right now. And if I did what we had before, where I had my button with just an outline of uh, zero. If we had that, that is our main CSS, that's right there, and I'm on my site, I'm, I'm tabbing through, and you can see my tab has actually selected this. I'm pushing tab again, and we see nothing because the box shadow is gone. And it's just part of having a high contrast mode on. It is not a super gigantic portion of your users that are using this, but there are people who use this. And now I've just made it so keyboard navigation is completely useless to them. So we could take this one back off and just have the outline color set to transparent. And by doing that, now we can see my link, it still looks the same as it did before, but if I push tab again, you can see the outline is on those. Because the outline still exists, but we're just saying that it's transparent. The high contrast mode, it basically resets a lot of the colors to the, the settings that are in that high contrast mode instead. So the shadow is actually gone, but that transparent outline, now the outline still exists. It was just transparent before, and now it's changed the color so we can actually see it. And the user, once again, can navigate. So while it might not be the largest amount of people who are using this, it is one simple change you can make to your CSS. Very, very, very small one that helps users out. So there's no reason not to do it. Now, next up, I want to talk a bit about animations and animations are actually a super useful part of the web. There's something that can really, when done right, can be amazingly useful in helping the user understand what's going on. And it can, if they're done purposefully, they can do a lot to help users out and make for a better user experience. And not only can they improve the user experience through like letting them know what's going on, they can even do things that just add a little bit of delight sometimes. But do you know what doesn't add delight? Things like nausea, vertigo, and migraines. And the wrong types of animations can actually cause that to happen for people. Now, if you'd like to know more about this, I'm gonna talk about it now, but I've also linked to an article in the description called called Your Interactive Makes Me Sick by Eileen Webb. She does a fantastic job of breaking the whole thing down, including examples of the good and the bad, uh, and also talking about how it's personal a lot of the time between different people. But I think this paragraph really sums it up well. Picture this, you're sitting in a car and the car next to you starts to pull forward. For a moment, you feel like you're moving backwards. That's the brief feeling of disorientation, where the world is moving in a way your body doesn't quite process. Imagine that you feel like that all the time. 
And some people don't mind some motion, but for some people it can really affect them in negative and disorientating ways. So what I want to do is take a look at this website. It is why Webflow, I don't want to throw shade at Webflow. I think it can actually be a decent tool for the type of thing it is. But this site, I think, just does a really good job of illustrating the types of things that could throw people off potentially um, or be problematic. And I don't think anything here, even though we have different animations going on, is specifically that bad. It's a little tacky, but it's tacky on purpose, uh, pretty much. So, um, especially because it's like the history of, of interaction on the web and stuff. So, uh, but once we start scrolling down, we start seeing some of the things that could come in here. Uh, like here we have this that sort of throws at us. This area has lots of motion going on with it as you're scrolling up and down. Here it's, I mean, it's a bit fun because it's GeoCities, but uh, you get the idea, you know, there's a bit there, but where for me up until now um, has been maybe offensive, <laughs> it just, there's not not even offensive. I mean, the GeoCities one but was, but that's just because that GeoCities was. But here where we get a bit of scroll jacking, um, so I'm scrolling down and it starts going sideways. Even when I was first going through this, I'm not someone who really gets thrown off by motion. It is disorientating when that happens. You sort of figure it out, but scroll jacking in general. Um, but that's one of those things where you're expecting one motion, you're getting a different one, which can be problematic for users. There's another one coming up in a second here uh, as well uh, with here, these like the, all these motions going in different directions as we're going up and down uh, as some of the different things that could potentially be things that sort of bother people. And like here, these are fine, I think. There's little, like these nice subtle motions, things like that aren't really gonna throw people off. But having things move in opposite directions than what you're expecting, even parallax effects that we can think are really, really cool looking, those can really be like things that throw people off because there's motion that's happening in ways they're not expecting it to. Temporary wardrobe change, as I had some issues with my original recording for this little part, uh, but, the idea with that is with users having or potentially having issues with motion or other things like that there are settings at the os level that users can turn on to help indicate that they do not like motion or they want to reduce the amount of motion that they experience and as the authors of websites it's actually very easy to respect those decisions so here's an example of something i put together a long time ago looking at intersection observers and how we can have things fade in or like the super common thing of having these go on uh, this is something that maybe wouldn't bother someone, but it can be annoying. And first of all, if you do these, set them up like this. So once the animation is run once, it doesn't keep like going in and out. That for anybody I think is annoying. Um, but since I'd already had this set up, I thought it'd be a nice thing that we could look at to show how we could disable it or disable certain animations and then re-enable them if people uh, want to. And there's two different approaches we can take to this. And we're gonna look at both of them really quickly. So here's where I set everything up to appear, <laughs> right? When So they're like faded out and then when, when things happen, they actually show up. And to be able to work around these, what we can do is we can use a media query called prefers reduced motion. So the media query looks like this and there's two options. One of those options is no preference and the other one is reduce. So let's start by looking at the no preference one, no preference. Uh, which is sort of the way we probably want to do it, where we build things without the animation and then we add them back in. Uh, and by including this in the media query, we're adding it in. Uh, there's a really good article, once again, linked in the description by Tatiana Mack that sort of explores why this is a nice way that we can approach things. Uh, but basically, I can take these parts where it's turning them away and, or, or turning them off, I should say, uh, and we can just remove that completely and put them up here and then those items will already be on the page. Um, I think we'll have to move all of this. Uh, and there's also my transforms here. So I'm just gonna copy this and remove the transforms off of those. And then we're just gonna come up inside of the pre uh, prefers reduced motion and paste all of that in up there. And we could remove the grid columns now because we don't really need them. And now if we, uh, refresh the page, everything should be exactly as it was before. So as I go down, everything's sliding in. And the reason for this is I have no preference set. So I'm in the world where there is no preference. Now to be able to test this because I am in CodePen, I'm just gonna change my view. Uh, let's make sure it's saved. And we're gonna change my view here to, uh, we'll go to debug mode or live view, just so it's not in an iframe. Uh, and this was, you know, if you're in a regular regular development, you wouldn't have to do that. And what you can do is you can open up your dev tools and inside your dev tools, we can go to here and uh, it's control shift P, be command shift P on a Mac, and you can do an emulate. And you can see all the different things we can emulate, including this prefers reduced motion reduced. So if I turn that on and now I scroll down, those things are not animating in. 
not bad, right? So we have no animation as a default, but then if somebody has no preference set, which is most people, those animations would be there and it's not really any extra work. It's a very simple change where you're including those inside of a media query. So you're just adding the animations or the different things within that rather than having them as the default and then trying to remove them afterward. Now, another common thing that you'll see is something like this, uh, which is part of CSS resets. So this is the opposite approach. It's saying pre prefers reduced motion reduce. And we're throwing an important all of these to sort of get rid of scroll behaviors, get rid of transition durations, iteration counts, and uh, animation durations. Uh, this is kind of important because if you have animations running, this sort of just skips them to the end um, to, to try and make sure that you don't run into any issues with them. This can have unintended consequences sometimes, but it is it's something that's in a lot of CSS resets these days. So yeah, this, this does work, but again, people that do have reduced motion off, it doesn't mean no motion, it's reduced motion, which is sort of the, the key word there. And sometimes this just gets rid of all motion, which, you know, little things can sometimes be useful for user interaction. So do think about it a little bit uh, for the crowd that's into, you know, Stack Overflow copy paste. This is what you're after. Um, and it can be a nice just sort of default if you're not going to think about it at all. But if you're just being a little bit thoughtful about how you can do things, you just add the animations in that are a little bit more aggressive perhaps uh, and it can be a nice way or even have a, an option of turning off animations within the site if it's something like the visual storytelling thing something where it can be really dramatic you could have a simplified version that doesn't have that and now the last thing i want to take a look at is actually the new browser default that a lot of people don't lean into again a very small thing that you can do that can make a big improvement especially just uh, on your side, this one a bit less than the users, but it's useful for the users anyway. Uh, and it's going back to focus states where you can see I have some pink outlines coming on all of these elements. And right now they're just using the regular focus. And one of the annoying things with focus is if you click on a button, it gains focus. Uh, interestingly, if I don't have this on and I click on them, you'll see there's no focus coming on. But if I tab onto them, it actually does have focus. And that's because browsers instead of using focus are actually using focus visible now. So here's the, the same code, but only for that one, just using focus visible rather than the normal focus like that. So I've just done a quick update to the CSS here. So this button has the regular focus, meaning if I click on it, it gains focus. Or if I keyboard navigate, it gets that purple outline or pink outline, I should say. But if I come on this one, I click, it's not gaining focus. But if I tab over to it, it is. And that's because focus visible, the browser's what's making the decision. And it's going the users interacting with it in this way, such as keyboard or mouse, but there's other ways they can navigate pages. And if it thinks that element should gain focus based on how the user is navigating the page and the type of element that it is, it will gain focus. And it's nice on buttons. So you have a hamburger menu and somebody clicks on it. You don't necessarily want it to all of a sudden have a focus ring. But if somebody's keyboard navigating, that focus ring can be really useful. And what's nice about focus visible, if we look at my inputs that I've set up down here, all these inputs are using focus visible. And, and as you'd expect then, if I tab through them, they are gaining it. But if I click into them, it also is. Because once again, the browser is making the decision. It's saying, should the user, should this be gaining focus? And in this case, because it's a text input, yeah, it, it makes sense for us to gain focus, even if we're keep, uh, even if we're using a mouse to interact with it. So the browser looks at the type of element it is. It's not just this blanket statement, which could be really useful. And that's not to say that you should only use focus visible. There's going to be cases with buttons where it actually makes sense for a focus state to be there. Even if a user clicks on it with a mouse, it depends on this type of styling and everything else you're doing for the different states. But it's one of those things that a lot of the time you could use focus visible and then every now and then you go, oh, actually focus would be better on this button for whatever reason. So three really simple solutions there. And if you liked this and you'd like to perform more simple solutions, I've looked at layout solutions that we can use uh, with three simple grid layout solutions. That video is right here if you're interested in that. And with that, I'd like to thank my enablers of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Michael, Patrick, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.